Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the New England Racing Show. Manchester, New Hampshire, Channel 23. Also on YouTube and like us on Facebook. You'll get it automatically. I'm your host, Bill Sturgis. Well, we're going to continue our interviews from the Racers Expo at uh, Marlboro, Mass. This is Denny Zimmerman on your left. Rookie of the Year from the Indy 500, 1972. There are a couple of old farts like me that are still running, <laughs> having a good time. That's great. When your career started, did you ever think that in 2014 you'd be looking forward to a new season? No, never, never. But uh, I have been blessed with good health, and Skip Matsek offered me a ride in a midget, and it's just been one great big fun ride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, back when you made it to the Speedway in 1971, 71 for the first time. Yep, and that's when you were Rookie of the Year at the Indianapolis yes, Motor Speedway. Yeah. Could you imagine if your career was starting now, and, and would you could you imagine having that goal and making it to the Speedway? It would be hard because nowadays you need a sponsor to get there. Right. A big time sponsor. In Marlboro, Massachusetts, we are uh, going from here to Lee, New Hampshire, just over the line uh, from Massachusetts. As a matter of fact, the Lee USA Speedway. Joe Bassett is the promoter up there, and I think you're just a little excited about 2014, right? More than a little bit. Okay. He's got a lot of things happening this year. So let's let's talk about the year. I, Lee's coming off a, uh, a good year in 2013, some very competitive racing. Uh, great divisions of race cars. Let's start there. Uh, can fans expect to see the same kind of program this year? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Pre-registered right now in the hobby stocks, which in my book is probably one of the best shows we have, is 17 cars right now. Great. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, things are looking good. A lot of pre-entered cars. Um, so we're looking good there. Going to start the season a little bit later this year. We're going to actually start our weekly racing on May 30th, um, which opened up the door to our normal Governor's Cup on May 4th, 13th, and then um, Mother's Day we got the Bullring Bash, and then May 25th, 4th, 4th and 5th, we have um, the Monster Trucks. Oh yes, so that's, we got that'll be Memorial groups. Day weekend. That had been a 4th of July mm -hmm. tradition yep. before. So we started off with three big shows to kick off the year, and um, the Tri-Track tri Race Series is um, really doing a number on this Bull ring bash for the Mother's Day. I think Explain that a little bit. The, the <coughs> tri track. It's a three race open series, and they're starting off at Lee Mother's Day. They're racing at Star in July and Seekonk in August. Um, Five thousand dollars to win at Lee, with guaranteed a thousand dollars to start the feature. These are what cars? Now? Modifieds. Modifieds, yeah. Modifieds, and um. They've already got a ten thousand dollar points fund between the three races. Wow! Yeah, they're 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 hustling. They're doing a lot of promoting, and and it's a win win for us. That's great, and that's uh, that's a brand new show for Lee this year. Yep. The modifieds in the past have been the uh, Valente Modified Racing Series. This is a more of an open event. Absolutely. They basically took um, the small block one twenty five from Star and the open wheel show at Seekonk and added a third race and made it the Tri-Track uh, Open Series. So there is a uh, series point fund or something that goes along yep. with that? Yep. Great. What about the other divisions? You <coughs> talked about the registrations in hobby stocks. Uh, of course, Modifieds are not a regular weekly division, nope. but your big division up there is the uh, Small Block Super Small Modified. Small Block Supers, we have pre-registered last count, I believe it was 12. Okay. So I. And we got a few rookies in there, so I think it's going to be a good thing. Um, and a new thing for 2014, we're um, scrapped the handicapping system we've traditionally used, and we're starting out by points. Points lead will start in the back every week. Okay. So, so it's not a three-week money no, one? No, you can't play the game of, well, if I finish here, I can get a good start, and you're going to start in the back. Wow. Uh, how do you handicap them for the first <coughs> couple of weeks? The... Um, the Super's going to be, a, a, and the Hobbies, because they're both going to race at the um, Bullring Bash on Mother's Day. Um, basically going to run just a feature, and they're going to luck of the draw and go, and then they'll be already 
handicap for the first race. How about, uh, let's see, traditionally some of the big shows there, of course, you open with ACT, uh, yep. which is the ACT opener. Traditionally, uh, they open their season uh, at the opening race of Lee. And uh, the Super Modifieds, I assume the Ali Silva Memorial is on the list somewhere? We have Visma on the list again, the Valente Modified Tour. Um, we, we, you can't have, not have the Ali Silva Classic, yeah. we, even though we lost it last year to rain. I mean, we had a great year competitive last year, but um, as far as the competitors in our local divisions, but you know, we lost the Valente Tour, we lost the Modifieds, we lo I mean the Super Modifieds, we lost the Monster Trucks, all for it. But you paid a personal visit with Mother Nature, I understand, in this off season, <coughs> and she's guaranteed you a great year. I haven't visited. You her, put but, your charm but on. But I, I will tell you. I will tell you. I'm telling everybody. Bigger and better in 2014, and it's not going to rain on Friday nights. There you go. That's good. <laughs> That's good to hear. Well, lastly, I want to talk to you about. Um, of course, I've been at Lee and been involved in Lee and doing some of the announcing there for years and years. But there's a real family feel there, and you do cater to families. You got a whole playground area oh, and all that. So this turns out to be a good family event on Friday nights. Yeah, and, and we're going to. We're, gonna, we're working on our show within the show, so you know we're going to have more of the family stuff. We're going to work on, you know, doing the bike giveaways and drawing, coloring contests, and you know, <coughs> excuse me. I'd like to do, you know, some theme nights and whatnot. We're going to work on the fan base this year. Good, that's a good thing, and it, it is a good place for families, uh, easily accessible uh, to get to, easy getting into the into the facility and out and. One more time, let's talk about the important dates, the opening race and then when the regular season opens. The important dates will be um, April 13th is the, um, the Governor's Cup, Act, Ameri Act Tour Race, and then um, Mother's Day, May 11th, will be the Bullring Bash, and then May 24th, the Monster Truck Show, and then we start weekly racing every Friday night on um, May 30th. Friday nights under the lights at New Hampshire Center of Speed, Lee USA Speedway, and you'll see Joe Bassett there uh, working his tail off. Hope so. Okay. <laughs> Joe, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Expo in Marlboro, Mass. I'm Pete Falcone with Kaz Gralla. Now, you might say the name sounds familiar, can't place it. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't know the name now, believe me, a year from now you will, because uh, to, to say he's a rising star is really an understatement. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. Great Thank to you see very you. Much. Actually, local to here where we are in Marlboro, out of Westboro, Massachusetts, which had a great racetrack once upon a time over there, uh, where I spent a lot of my youth, but long before Kaz's time. But more so, the fact of your locale is where you're headed, and uh, we'll start with where you began, and we'll end up with the fact that you're going to be having some some big weeks in uh, Florida this year, right. but um, uh, I know you uh, coming up through the Bandolero series, right? Yes, sir. And how did it all start? Um, my dad used to race actually sports cars, so he introduced me to racing when I was just four years old in a go-kart, because uh, obviously he knew how cool it was, he loved it, um, and he was actually pretty good himself. So he got me into it, and I played every sport and raced, and I never liked anything like I liked racing. Uh, so I stuck with it, and at 10 years old, I went to Bandoleros. 12, I went to, Ban or, uh, went to Legend Cars. And then 14, I went to Late Models. So what about the, because the, I know kids, uh, there's a lot of kids out there that would love to follow in, the, in your footsteps. Uh, where were those Bandoleros and Legend Cars races that you ran? Almost all of them were in and around the Charlotte area in okay. North Carolina. Um, I did venture into the north for maybe three or four races, but not very much. Um, down in Charlotte is where the unbelievable competition is, um, and it definitely, definitely made me a much better driver. Now, we were talking uh, before we started taping that you uh, have already been to Daytona because you were in a race there just recently. Yes, sir. I was in the uh, Continental Tire Race down at um, the Rolex 24 weekend. That was a lot of fun um, with Rum Bum Racing, and we finished fourth. Uh, so it was very, very cool. Uh, so m making left and right turns must have made <laughs> your father pretty proud. Yeah, and that was actually one of his favorite tracks, so he was definitely very happy to see me there. Great, great. 
And the big news is that uh, you've been signed to a pretty big deal coming up here in 2014. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm lucky to have the opportunity with Turner Scott Motorsports in the K&N East Series for the full-time season. And you're one of uh, a, a team of four cars, is it? Uh, five cars. Five cars, yep. Yeah. You'll be in which car? I'll be in the number 31, Oslink Chevrolet. Okay. And uh, have you done some testing uh, with them already? Just one test so far in New Smyrna, and that's all I'm going to have before I jump in to race. So uh, tight on time, but we felt pretty solid in the test, so I'm not too worried. I think, I think we're in good shape. The car is very good. I've got Ray Holm behind me as the crew chief, um, and obviously the whole team has a lot of experience, so they're very, very good. And uh, you're going to run the whole uh, schedule? Yes, sir. That, they, they do a fair amount of traveling these days, don't they? They do, all around the whole eastern part of the country, including some new tracks this year, like Watkins Glen, that will be a lot of fun. Wow. Work. Yeah. Have you ever, you've probably been to Watkins Glen, right? Uh, I was there, I believe, before I turned one, okay. when my dad was <laughs> racing there. But not okay. that I remember, sure. actually. And yeah. I'll probably be one of the youngest drivers ever there, because I believe they have a rule where you have to be 18 to drive there, okay. which they're going to make an exception for the K&N series with. And uh, this, that's a pretty competitive uh, division, the K&N Pro Series. Um, is, was that an aspiration? I, I, you drove some late models, right? Yes, sir, and of course that was an aspiration for a whole third of my life, which has only been five years, but you know, one of my goals was definitely to make it to K&N. So. That's really, really cool. And like you said, the, the field this year is stacked um, more, it seems, than it's been in the last couple of years. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge, but I think it's going to make me a better driver. Well, a, a division that was really born right here in, in, in this area, which originally was the, uh, the old uh, Bush uh, North Series, Bush East Series, and um, now it has really become the training ground for some of these guys when you think of the, the Truexes and, and uh, uh, even more recently Daryl Wallace and some of those guys coming out of that division, uh, you've got to be thrilled. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. Who are your teammates this year? Uh, ben Rhodes, Scott Hecker, Cameron Haley, and let's see if I can remember. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten a chance to meet all of them. Oh, and Brandon Jones. I raced him actually in the UARA series this year and Ben Rhodes as well. Cameron Haley, I've never raced before, nor have I raced Scott Hecker, but I hear obviously they're really good. So I'm sure everybody, particularly the, the young viewers, would, would want to know, who are you particularly watching on a Sunday afternoon in a sprint cup race? <laughs> Well, Jimmy Johnson's definitely my man. Yeah, I think okay. he's a pretty good pick. He seems to win a lot. So. And so, if he walked up to you at one of these tracks to offer a little advice, you'd be listening. Then. I think I'd probably freeze. Yeah. <laughs> um, now that's got to be an aspiration, obviously. Oh right? yeah, to be on the track at the same time as him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be crazy. That's all. You you've always been a Jimmy Johnson fan. I have. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you sir, believe it or not, I I I'm. I'm could say with a lot of certainty that he'll see you run this year, you know, because uh, be you guys uh, show up um, a lot of the same places, and uh, you know that that'll be exciting. Um, what about lifestyle? What, what else do you do when you're not in a race car? Oh man, well I'm busy with school. I go to Worcester Academy here in Massachusetts. Um, it's a private school, so I have a lot of work and a lot to make up when I miss school. So. Okay. I definitely keep myself busy with that. Yeah. So, uh, any other sports? No, actually. Racing takes up a whole lot of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, in between studies, you'll be jumping in the race car. Yeah. Okay. So, New Smyrna is first. Yes. The butterfly's setting in already on that? Yeah, a little bit. I'm, yeah. I'm nervous for it, but I think it's going to be really fun. And then where do you go from there? What, what Daytona, Daytona's two days next? later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's going to be stressful, trying to get the cars turned over really quick. Yeah. That's the uh, the battle on the beach, as they call it. Yes. Um, have you heard anything about the about that track? I know they kind of broke into that last year. They, mm -hmm. they, they had some ups and downs with the races there. Yeah. Are they making changes for this year, do you know? They are making a couple changes, actually. I was in it last year in the late models, um, okay. which they don't have back this year, unfortunately. It's just going to be the K&N and the Modifieds. Yeah. But I hear they're going to make the straightaway shorter and the corners wider and more defined. Um, that's just rumors. I'm not sure what it's going to be. They build it on the day of the event, 
and it's only a one-day event, so yeah. it's going to be a surprise for all the teams. Nobody quite knows exactly how it's going to be, so it's going to be it's going to be hectic. Yeah, it's it'll be, be an cool. even even playing field, I guess, because you'll is. you'll all have equal experience on that track. That's right. You know. So, uh, what about the goals for 2014? Uh, obviously, probably Rookie of the Year. Well, I mean, of course, I'd hope for that, but yeah. I'd just like to get some. Uh, top fives, top tens, maybe later in the season once I get used to it. Um, I don't have really any high, high goals set for myself, but anything that I do accomplish this season will be a bonus for me. And it's all happened pretty fast, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, very, very fast. How did it come about, uh, particularly getting a call from a big team like Turner? Uh, well, we talked to them at one of the races this year, um, one of the K&N races we went to and they had heard of me and they were interested in having me on board and it all just came together perfectly. Well, um, here, here's a guy that's going to make New England pretty proud. Uh, Thank you. As we said, right from a stone's throw where we're located here in Marlboro, Massachusetts, makes his home in uh, Westboro and uh, uh, he's uh, headed south to uh, the races at New Smyrna and Daytona and uh, we'll not only be watching, we'll be rooting for you. Thanks very much. Kaz, congratulations. Thank you for having okay, me. And thanks for being with us. At Racers Expo in Marlboro, Massachusetts, this time with Matt Fram. Now, we're going to introduce Matt Fram as being from the Granite State Pro Stock Series, which is where most of his recent success has come from. But this is a New England guy that uh, we've been following uh, uh, all the way back to running the 350 Supers at Star and and the pro stocks there, and uh, then uh, with uh, some some uh, rides in the nationwide series, we were just a minute or so ago talking about uh, Darlington and Charlotte and places like that. But let's get back a little closer to home. Uh, the Granite State Pro Stock Series. You were solidly top five in the points last year in 2013, and um, looking for a good run again this year, right? Yeah, we were very solid in the points. Uh, we we were honestly. I have to thank my team and all the people that support us because we were solid every time we, we uh, showed up to the racetrack. We were always, you know, running in the top three and, and uh, having a chance to win basically every show. But the problem was is that we had a lot of mechanical failure this year, unfortunately, which is, you know, uncontrolled variables. So, which uh, hopefully we can get the monkey off our back for the 2014 season. And it's a, it's a, Family operation, you, you were telling me, it's your, your cars, and uh, so you not only drive them, you work on them, too. Correct, correct. I, uh, I do get my hands dirty, which is good. It's uh, ever since I was a kid and started racing, it's my, what my father's taught me. You know, you got to work hard for what you want, and it's, it's been good. I wouldn't have it any other way, and um, it's, it's nice to put in some effort and have, you know, feel some appreciation for if we do win a, a race or a championship or so on and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about that series. Uh, of course, you know, you come from the day when uh, just about every track had a pro stock division and th th things, again, as racing changed and the tracks backpedaled on that, the guys uh, kept their equipment together and that organization was formed and always a good car count when you go out and it's pretty competitive too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, for a two-year division like this, it's actually pretty impressive. It's uh, what Mike Parks has done and, and, and everybody else who were involved with it from the start. Um, it's it's pretty impressive. It, uh, it it has you know it has its its um, growing pains and it needs to kind of find its way a little bit here. But I have I have no doubt in my mind that it'll continue to grow, um, and I'm happy to support it and happy to be a part of it. Well, you're gonna make a lot of stops around New England in 2014. We're talking about the schedule, some of the uh, the usual haunts like uh, Monadnock and Star and Lee and places like that. Um, and uh, probably the biggest track you'll run on will be Thompson. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I I, I love basically every track in in the Northeast that I've been to. I, I don't have a track that I don't like. Um, and you know, as I as I told you a couple minutes ago, we. Monadnock's probably my favorite place. It's a really racy place. You got to be on your toes, you know, every corner, every lap. I mean, you got to save your stuff, but you got to be there at the end, and you got to be on your toes. It's anything can happen there. It's a bull ring, so it's probably one of my favorite places to go. And you were uh, fortunate enough to get some national exposure uh, with the the uh, nationwide series or the K and N series. Tell us a little bit of how that all came about. Uh, that that all came about basically just just being around the right people and. and and uh, just having the right opportunities at the right time. I was able to step into a K&N car uh, for the first time in 2010 
in Martinsville, Virginia, uh, where we ended up finishing eighth. You know, we went down there. As a, a lot of it was a group of friends, and we had a blast down there. And I don't think we ever thought of coming home in eighth. You know, but it was a great, great finish for us, and uh, kind of opened our eyes to really what what the divisions in the South, the national divisions are, and what you're competing with. You know, you're competing with so much money and competition and bloodlines. It's uh, it's a very, very tough sport to break into, and um, I, I've just I've learned a ton. I've had a lot of experience now down there. A lot of high, high speed tracks, different types of race cars, different types of tires. Just I've learned a lot since being down there, and I do not regret one minute of it, whether I step back into one of those cars at some point in my life or not. Well, I th I think uh, in your favor is the fact that. Um, they're a little more accepting of the guys coming down from north of the uh, Mason-Dixon line that's, than the yeah. days of, uh, you know, Ronnie Bouchard that's or whatever, right. trying that's to break right. his way into Correct. what was primarily a southern sport, uh, at least with those kind of cars back then. Uh, so, uh, but we were talking uh, before the show that, you know, um, some of it involves a little, I mean, obviously you got to have talent, but you you got to be in the right place at the right time and kind of know the right people, too. Oh, right? yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of politics. It's... A lot of politics, sponsors, and if you're marketable or not. And um, talent obviously has to be there because you can't show up to a track and, and run for a team and go out there and run in the back all you know all year long and expect to keep your ride. So there is still a talent factor in it, but it's not what it was you know back in the old days of the Allisons and the Earnharts and the Petties, and it's nothing nothing similar whatsoever you really got to be able to market yourself you have to be a, a diverse driver you have to bring sponsorship and know how to get your way around the track let's back up for just a minute and go back to the very beginning what got you in a race car i guess you started in go-karts what 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 got you started as opposed to going out and playing baseball or basketball well i i was fortunate enough as a kid that my parents put me through all that stuff too i, was, I played hockey i played baseball soccer all that stuff um i i'd say honestly i just I grew up at the tra at the tracks when I wasn't playing hockey or soccer or football. Or I grew up at race tracks, and my father owned a few different race cars throughout the years. He actually owned a, uh, a Bush North car. Went back when the when the Bush North was Bush North and not the K and N, and when it was racing, you know, when it was really good racing. Um, he owned a car, and which Dale Shaw drove for a handful of races, and uh, they ended up splitting ways. But regardless, that's that's basically what made me want to step in a car. It was I grew up with it. I didn't know any different. And now we'll get into the future and talk about this 2014. Uh, what are you looking for? I'm going back for the championship. That's what I'm looking for. I was, uh, I, I tasted it last year, and, and mechanical failure unfortunately pushed us off that uh, pushed us off that mountain. So I'm going right back for it. Got some sponsors you want to thank? Yeah, I want to thank I want to thank uh, SNF Crane, WDW Machine. Granite Industrial Gases and Lambert Roofing for all their support over since I started when I was 14, 13 years old. And they'll be on the car this year? They will be there. Yeah. They will be there supporting us. Great. Matt Fram, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you guys very much. Here in the Northeast, we know pro stocks, we know late models, we know modifieds, we know sprint cars, we know super modifieds, and we know midgets. Out where this guy comes from, Steve Needles, we know super late models. Steve, you drive one of them. Before we get into your the way that you make a living, I want to talk a little bit about these super late models. Would it be safe to say for people that have never seen one, it's super late models that are pretty radical? Uh, super late models on steroids, basically. I mean, they are bad, bad machines. Um, it's a 2,700-pound car, so kind of your standard late model, but with a all aluminum wedge body, some carbon panels thrown in there, a lot of titanium, and uh, a ton of horsepower. How do you harness that horsepower, especially at places like Berlin and, and where you make, make your bones each and every week? Well, it's tough. Um, you know, the way it is nowadays, you know, there's a lot of those tracks, especially Berlin and Kalamazoo, where you can't use a ton of horsepower. Um, you're limited with tires. So a lot of times we have to be real careful, and we, we actually have to run some different engine packages and things with a little less power so that we can make the cars last, uh, save tires, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but it's all in the in the chassis setups, you know, the shock packages and everything like that, just like it is anything else. And like so many other of so many of us that uh, have a passion for a sport, you have successfully channeled it as well into a career as part of All Star Performance. Tell our viewers a little bit about what All Star Performance does. Well, we're a, a parts manufacturer, a parts reseller 
that uh, we make and sell the hard parts that every racer needs. Uh, it's by the racers for the racers is kind of like how we like to put it. It's um, it's an econ not an economy product. It's a high quality product at an affordable price. And there's a lot of pieces that we make that you can't find anywhere else. That a lot of guys don't have the time to fabricate themselves. That we'll go in and we'll we'll design it and we'll make it, and they can buy it rather than having to spend a day in the shop having to build it. And they don't have to empty their wallets to buy them. You uh, you and I had a had a really fascinating conversation a couple hours ago, and we were we were comparing where where you live and where you basically work all the time, and that's in the Midwest. And now that you make trips out here with All Star Performance to service your clients and be part of like the Racers Expo, what you're starting to see trending that separates northeastern racing from midwestern racing. Share that with our viewers. Well, it's like we spoke earlier. You know, the big thing that I've noticed up here is people still manufacture their own parts they they're fabricators they're they're chassis builders themselves you know you've got the mom and pop guys that have their their auto repair shop and then they have a car race car in the back you know that they work on after hours where we're from it's kind of almost just the opposite where guys they buy everything they don't they don't build the parts in pieces unique that they do in the northeast so what we're trying to do is kind of come up here and say hey you know we've got this stuff you don't have to spend all this time building the pieces that that you can buy from us for a reasonable price because your time is worth money you know your time is worth something so um you know you don't have to spend all those extra hours in the shop you know that you may or spend it on doing something else to make you faster so so how's the feedback been oh, it's been great it's been great you know we come up here and this is really one of the better shows that we do as far as with the hardcore racers um, because they don't really know about us up here. So to come up here and to, to have our presence felt, um, we've passed out a ton of catalogs. You know, we, it's been great. It's been perfect. Yeah, and you talk about the catalog. It's about this thick. But one of the things you and your, you and your, your partner shared with me is one of the items that you sell an awful lot of, and I thought about it after I left your display, are radiators why well everybody's got to have one and they wreck a ton of them <laughs> that's why i mean you think about it the first thing to go on a race car when they wreck you always see water trickling down the racetrack so yeah. hey there's a radiator so we tell sell tons and tons and tons of radiators when you look at the state of affairs nationally uh, at your level of racing how would you grade it Right now, um, there are certain segments that are definitely struggling, I, I would say. It's starting to rebound. Um, 2007, 2008, when the economy really took a dive, we noticed it. We felt it big time. And at this point, I would say that it's really starting to make a comeback. You know, we've been the busiest that we've been in, in years at this point in the season, and the weather's been terrible. Yeah. So when people actually, actually start to get out and work on their cars, uh, we uh, are we going to be able to keep up? You know that's the big thing. But it's um, I would say that it's coming back. You know I, you know B plus A minus. You know somewhere in that range where, how it's been this year. But you know it, it's going to if it keeps going the way it's been going, we're going to really uh, it's going to be a great year. Getting itchy to get back in the saddle yourself? I can't wait. I can't wait. This off season they're terrible. You know, you sit there and you watch the snow, and here and there you go ski or something like that, but there's nothing that can replace racing. Well, we're glad to have you as part of Racers Expo, and uh, we appreciate your taking a little time to visit with us today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Well, there's some more interviews, and the next four or five weeks, we're just going to continue with the interviews from the Racers Expo down in Marlboro, Mass., back on February 8th. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.